Shalom, shalom, laham, shalom, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Oh, again, today it's day six of our um, of of this shoot. Sorry, day six of twelve. So we um last night yeah we we finished very uh, late um we're back here i needed this some seattle coffee <laughs> i needed some seattle coffee to to pump my blood if you just joined this channel please consider to subscribe like and share let's uh road to growth it's a busy calm weekend and the people are yeah most of the companies uh, are closed some are open until 12 around but midday the film shoots is different it's very damn different and um it depends on the schedule it depends on the you know sometimes the location makes uh, you to work uh, more than six days or uh, more than five days and if it's a short show like this one this is this is literally a three weeks shoot uh, two weeks in South Africa and one week in Lagos Nigeria so uh because of that everything is fast so we only gonna have like one day rest monday it's a shabbat i supposed to be home i supposed to rest but um yeah so again we are yeah, uh my team is arriving at 12 and we're gonna prep everything for the actors uh, the actors I think they arrive around by half or 12 and um, then they dress we start you know usually it says after having breakfast usually uh, the call time on set usually happens after having <laughs> so we yeah and yesterday I got a bit lazy I was not lazy, my laptop, uh, I don't know. This generator went in and up and my uh, computer cable, uh, you know, shut down, couldn't, it's, 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 it's broke, or I don't know what to say, it broke down, or whatever I call it, uh, it it's, it's went faulty. It couldn't charge my laptop no more. And I had to, I had I had a computer uh, another HP cable but it was not fitting properly so it was not stable this morning when I plugged it it's, it's I had to readjust like kind of manipulate the cable to you know to stick to the laptop to charge which is it's not great you know it can cause I don't want more damage but I will keep it as a backup in case I had to get a, a, a cable, a new charger, it was not that expensive. At this particular time, you don't go, I, I know, they're all the same. The one I had, it says 45 watts, this is 90 watts I bought, so hopefully it can su support, sustain heavy heat, uh, things like that. I know power, we have a, a, a situation of, of uh, load shading they called it in South Africa we call it the load shading or, or um, 
I don't know. In America, there is another expression used. Uh, in French, you say délestage, where the power goes off for two hours or three. But they let you know. You know, the best part here is you have a schedule. You already know midnight, 12 o'clock or 10 o'clock today, the power will go off. So at least at the same time, you can get ready to... Uh, you are ready you prepare yourself if it says two hours uh, sh uh, power shortage um, then you will have to you know whatever device that you have you need to charge them until the last minute so that when the power goes off you survive for the, those two hours but sometimes it goes for six hours and that's a those, those are the brutal days the days because even the cell towers go off because they don't sustain the cell towers now barely survive two hours power uh power uh, cut literally some some cell towers when you have four hours power cut after two hours your network is gone uh you just start buzzing you know you start losing network because the the cell towers batteries are also weak now because they were not prepared, they were not prepared for these such a power shortages. They were like once in a while emergency. But now every two hours or every let's say every six hours there is a, 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 a power cut. Meaning these batteries are will charge for four hours, five hours. Sometimes they don't charge fully. Because you know, as batteries are, they sometimes will work for only like I mean, after a certain time of usage, they start losing element and everything. Then recharging them properly now it's a problem. Now, your power goes off after, uh, for two, three hours or four hours usually, then you have. The power, uh, the batteries that's supposed to be charging maybe for 12 hours, it's only charging for six hours, so you won't charge fully. And the time you have uh, the power, the next power, the scheduled power cut, these batteries didn't charge properly, so you then they start you start losing network, literally use losing network, and people steal them also. I mean, South Africa, uh, shame. sometimes things that you know, the government in South Africa would allow so many things to happen. I mean, people, literally, I will, like, I mean, next time when I go, uh, when I have an opportunity, I'll show you how the cell towers are protected in South Africa now, like in the townships. They literally build them blocks of towers i mean a whole i mean i think maybe uh like a four meter or five meter hole something like that just just so that people don't claim to go to go steal the, the batteries because it's just too much so uh, communicate telecommunication company everybody like people used to protest for so many things there's one thing that south african haven't been able to protest it's power shortage everybody given up to that once once only the opposition the third largest uh, party in south africa called up uh, a protest but that was political some other political parties never joined because they didn't want to empower that idea coming from uh, you know someone else it's political so it was not for the for the good of the people it was just uh, for votes and to show that they care politicians literally do not care as long as they make money they don't they steal they got kick they get kickbacks from company government I mean, there's people who are making money in solar business. So those people, those companies literally wish the, the power company to die. Because it's like, a, 
uh, you know, it's like these tow trucks, accident vehicles. You know, the tow trucks in South Africa. That guy knows, man. Yeah. And it's not a Lamborghini, it's not a Ferrari. It's a, it's a Honda. Honda, what I would call it, Honda. Yeah, but uh, again, so at certain stage in South Africa, this is <laughs> this is what the the, the 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 like everyone does their own thing. Some you know in a corner they will come up with something. So two trucks drivers, because with no accident they did not make money. So what these guys used to do is late night. They will pour a diesel on the road so that and they knew they targeted certain places so that when people because people drove drive fast late night so late night people do drive very fast because they rush sometimes for no reason sometimes just to slow down in the next intersection so these tow truck drivers used to uh, put diesel, pour diesel on the road so they can cause accidents. Because there's more accident, there's more money they will be making. Because they will rush. Because since they, they position themselves in spots of uh, hotspot, accident hotspots, waiting for something, like at someone to die, you know, so you can make money kind of things like that same as like a uh, uh, solar panel company now because it's a business that's booming it's making money so these guys are literally sabotaging uh, you know uh, the uh, how do you, these guys are literally sabotaging the the, 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 the national uh, power the power plants and that's the fact that's not like I'm, I'm not making up this this is the previous the former ceo of escom uh I ran a parallel investigation not telling the government because they found out that the government was com uh, complicit to the sabotage if the highest uh you know someone in, in the presidency is is aware of that so you cannot tell people so what this, the former ceo did was to run a parallel investigation he never told they hired a private investigator uh, investigator and but they, the board of the, uh, the escom signed for it so that they can release the money because as a ceo you couldn't just release the money so the board of ESCOM has to release the money. So they were told and they agreed. So they, they never said a word to government. Only to find out that the, pre, the, the, the deputy president of the country was involved in sabotaging ESCOM so that they could make money. I mean, subcontract. That is a company, a government company that has so many subcontracts even for small things they have subcontracts so the and the subcontract goes to repair something they will mess it up they will throw in those who are supplying coal who supply coal they will supply faulty coal to the company so they can sell the real one to china because the chinese are the one buying coal in the, mostly in, South, in africa so they will do that so they can make money more money because the grade they're selling to China the best grade and themselves they will now give rejects to South African uh, plant power plant and along that they will throw in uh, how do you call these uh, metals into the, the mixed metals with the coal so that when the coal is burning and uh, the metals also it's messing up the metal would then mess up the machines so it can crack, break, and they can be called again to come. Uh, 
they can come fix and this is this is what happens in Africa like people literally will it, it's like you you give your mechanic a car to fix they will fix it they still even your real parts the new one that the parts the real the, your genuine parts they steal them put you back once they can break in two months time you go back so it's become like a routine checkup it's like you know uh, uh, a body that has been wounded you know when uh, so you you can go back in and out so that they can make more money because if you just go once they fix you you never come for a year then where they're gonna get more customers so they can that's a better for how it goes and the government allowed it so the CEO ran a parallel investigation and the report was damning the guy was even poisoned they 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 almost killed him luckily the guy is a white guy you know he, he has money and he could treat himself he could run to a best a, a medical facility in the country they poisoned him in coffee coffee in his office can you see that so the person who made a, who used to make coffee in the office that's with how low they went because they knew that outside that the guy was very very careful so in the office they targeted him in the office and almost got him until the guy resigned. He left because pressure. Because they couldn't, if they couldn't get him, uh, since they couldn't get him in in with poison, all up, that guy would have been shot dead if he did not resign. Because literally, if a minister can be robbed on a highway. Hello, great, and you? amazing show so the guy if a minister can be robbed in a highway a full minister in a government has been robbed with I mean a security details disarmed do you think the CEO of a, 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 a SOE they call them SOE uh, you know state owned enterprise what that person will do they will shoot him they will shoot him dead they'll do it they killed they killed mayors they killed i mean they shoot mayors they shoot mps that guy was would not survive if he never resigned and if you don't toe the line you you are out so the money that's like i mean that's how we we complain about a lot of things but at the same time oh man we, we, you know we rob our people the black man also mistreat the black person sometimes worse literally take a black person for for dog for a dog remember these are the people that the ancestors sold their brothers to the west and today you say, oh, they came. The white people never came and ran havoc in the jungle and in Africa and trying to capture black people. Black people were captured by black people and sold. That was business. And those ones who were sold, you didn't know that's Israel. Because the prophecy has to be fulfilled. The one who were left behind, it's Esau. Now your blood is boiling. So Israel or Yahushua'al, not really Israel, Yahushua'al is the children of the trans transatlantic trade. Those who went to the Americas, to the new world, to the world of the new, the, the world of the new pyramids. Those are the, those are the descendant of Yah Oshar. Remember, one mother, one father, two nations, Esau and Jacob, or Yah Ohaka, not Jacob, Hasho and Yah Ohaka. 
twins. So you must remember that part. We are mostly brutalized by our own people. They want to be seen. They must have more money than the others so that they can say, ah, look at these people just asking. But they're not making opportunities. There's no, you know, you, you level the, you level uh, the field of opportunity. Offices must be open for everybody. Must be an accident up here because the ambulances are running over now. They're rushing now. Yeah, gone. Ambulances. Mm. So my coffee is finished. And that shalom if you just joined this channel please consider to subscribe like share comment this is going to be part one of this uh today episode so part one then uh later on i'm gonna do part two i'll see if i can you know go better down this town that's literally we are just up you know in uh, the cbds of Cape Town center down here. Ooh.